Good morning. I'm uh, going to uh, uh, create an ICC profile of my printer today and uh, let's get started right away. So first things first, I have to do a, a calibration uh, of the paper. This is the paper that you can see a little bit here, the roll of paper in my printer and this is the type of paper that I'm going to be feeding the machine today. It's called Epson Enhanced Matte Paper. It's a 17 inch roll of paper. So first things first before starting to do anything I suggest that I check first what the the state of the printing head and to do that I'm going to be printing a, a nozzle check so the nozzle check is going to come out here any minute let's wait for the machine to do its magic and then once the nozzle check is printed we're gonna be I'm gonna go to the next stage and the first stage like I said is to get this nozzle check uh, just to be on the safe side, just to be sure that the paper, that the heads are optimal and uh, there are no surprises. Recently I had uh, the misfortune of finding the black, the photo black ink completely clogged and uh, I didn't realize it until a few prints later and then the uh, I had some difficulty unclogging it using power cleaning but uh, it's okay now I managed to unclog it after a few power cleaning and let the printer rest for a day now, not everybody has that chance but I had that chance so here it is and uh, it's hard to see let's see if I can focus here there it is I can see that the cyan all the channels seem to be there the yellow is always difficult to see but it's there so I'm gonna stop the video at that point and move on to the next step if I can stop the video uh, this is uh, Oris uh, color tuner main window uh, this is uh, as you can see there are some menus uh, add queue view color uh, there's a lot of stuff going on under the color menu and under the utilities menu and there are some icons spread across the top here the icons that are most interesting to us at this stage are the icons that relate to creating what's called a reference printer profile so that is not in any one of these icons it's under the utilities menu and uh, the reference printer profile item is located right here and we're going to launch that right now uh, that's the first step we need to take in order to create uh, uh, a queue a print queue in uh, with this uh, rip so Let's go to create by wizard and follow the motions one by one. So that's the opening window and we're going to be guided step by step in this uh, in this process. So first things first is call a to print a linearization test chart. This is the same pretty much as with any other RIP software, whether it be Onyx or GMG or whatever. Um, this is because the this rip is driving directly the printer so let's go to the next step and here at this step the software wants to know uh, a lot of things from us that can be done over in this printer first things first is to locate which printer uh, we would like to work with there's a series of output devices that could be supported that are uh, available out of Windows, uh, having installed the drivers for different devices in Windows. So uh, 
let me see if I can boost the audio a little bit. Okay, so we're, in, we're interested in the SCP-5000 because that's the only printer I have on my network. That's the only Epson. Uh, HP printer is a black and white printer. That's not really what we want. TIFF printer could be useful for testing purposes, but we really want to go to the this one, this printer, the SureColor P5000, which is hooked to my network from uh, uh, an RG45 uh, a connection. So first things first then, there's see all these five tabs and these five tabs will control some interesting printing options. First things is which driver do we want to take? The, the Epson driver or the Windows driver? And there is no reason to use the Windows driver. So let's go to the proprietary driver and uh, the model of the printer is you know could be a few uh, but the one we're interested in is the p5000 color mode refers to which inks x ink sets we want to use the matte black or the photo black and in my case i want to stick with the photo black ink so that's two cyan there's a dark cyan light cyan vivid magenta light magenta yellow black black unfortunately with my printer when i ordered it no one told me that i could have gotten the model with the violet ink and by the time i had uh, assembled the printer on my uh, in my office it was too late to go back it's re irreversible the neutral gray option and advanced printing options i'm not going to get into and uh, I don't know increasing coverage could really help or make any difference. This is a parameter that I could experiment with at some other time. Print head cleaning, that's not for me now. And printing method refers to either we print with very fine dots or we print with uh, dots that looks like uh, uh, they were generated out of a printing press. Uh, halftone dots they're called so I'm not interested in halftone dot simulation so I'm going to stick with continuous tone so that's for this tab that's all I have to indicate under this tab I got to be careful over here which test target I'm going to be using because ESP refers to having the spectral on board of this printer and I don't have I didn't buy the optional spectral uh, head for this printer so i need to change it i need to tell the ins the software i'm going to be using a different one and the one i'm going to be using could be any one of these let's say i go to the i1 uh, uh, directory and let's say i want to use uh, uh, target design for the i1 then i'd have a choice among these uh, targets under the I1 IO table, you see I have this one called 21 step 820 IO and I1. I guess if I could open it up with Acrobat Reader, you'd see what's inside it. And this is what's inside it. So let me just reduce it down to size so you can better see what is it, what the target looks like that's this target over here 21 steps and it's meant to be designed to be read by the i1 or the io table sorry if i cannot get to the bottom of the screen that's unfortunately unfortunate but that's how it is right now with my capture program so the the target that i'm interested in reusing since i have a konica minolta fd9 instrument is located inside this directory and the target in question is this target same 21 step cmyk but it's designed for the fd9 and let's take a look at the target see that's how the target comes up it's going to have this shape this it's going to go from white totally white and increasing gradually towards solid cyan solid magenta solid yellow and solid black and that's going to allow the rip color tuner web in this instance to linearize uh, to sort of a, uh, set the tone response for all these patches so that they look well behave so let me select this target 
click on open and I should be fine for the next step uh, over here it's very important I select the paper type and the paper type makes it a whole difference bit uh, on the amount of ink that it's that is uh, printed or transferred or uh, projected on the paper by the driver uh, ideally I would want to use the type of paper that corresponds you know to the exact type of paper I'm printing on but my experience and my tests so far has shown me that if I stick with the enhanced matte paper I'm not going to have much of uh, a solid uh, cyan magenta so I'm going to change the uh, type of paper over here directly for the Oris Pearl Proof which is one of their you know strongest uh, uh, actually it's a kind of a coated paper and maybe I could get more uh, out of photo gloss premium gloss but that's going to be for some other time for now I'll stick with Oris Pearl Proof and the resolution is going to be super fine 720 I don't need any more than that for my purposes the paper source is going to be rolled paper I have 17 inch rolled paper uh, in my printer waiting for printing print layout and that auto cut I want auto cut print layout that's uh, the, the print is not going to be adjusted uh, centered it's going to be left aligned and that's for postscript and what uh, to do about uh, the uh, the image uh, out of decoded I'm not gonna bother further with this and the date here actually this is going to be appearing on the header uh, next to the other information and that could have anything I want over here I could leave the date so let's say this today is July the 7th and I'm gonna put July the 7th here so I'm ready to go now advance to the next step and I'm gonna hit print and the printer it says has an embedded spectrophotometer that's optional in the printer that I purchased I did not buy the uh, optional spectrophotometer so I'm going to have to use an external instrument for measuring the patches so I'm gonna hit choose that selection and hit next and now you see what the software does is it's preparing the chart transforming it from whatever it is whatever it was in PDF and it's outputting it to the printer line by line by line by line and you can hear in background the sound of my printer going on so it's gonna take a few seconds but uh, by the time it finishes printing and I'm gonna have to cut the the paper and then feed it into my instrument for measuring which I'll show you next in a second so I'm going to uh, click on the next button to advance to the next step and we come up to this window over here and uh, I guess I could uh, open up my instrument while the print is going and uh, you'll hear it uh, going it's uh, it takes uh, one second or two to warm up and initialize and get ready and as soon as it's ready we're going to be able to select it test it it says please wait and now you see it's gone into standby mode so let me just be sure that it's online so i hit the select button and this is the window that comes up i see i have access to all the devices that are supported by the rip uh, there's quite a few uh, so the one that I'm interested is this one Konica Minolta FD9 and it's plugged by a network and I'm going to test it and see if it responds now the instrument responded and I get a connection and I get the IP and the network name and the serial number and its SDK number and the next thing I need to check is its properties so under the properties button I should have uh, you know the important thing here uh, I gotta be patient because it goes through me I have to be careful and patient uh, sometimes there's more than one thing going on in this machine there it is that's the device properties 
and I have a choice of a few options over here. The statisty refers to the density. Uh, there could be many, uh, there, there are four or five, but the one that I'm interested in and most people are in North America is called status T. T as in Timothy, and you see in bracket, it's defined into an ISO standard called 5-3. I don't have any filter install. The eliminant is always D50. The standard observer is 2 degree, and the measurement method is important. Now, uh, I could use legacy, but I'm going to using M1, although for uh, measuring density, I think I should uh, stick with M0, but I, I don't know it's going to make, uh, well, it would make a difference in the reported number for the density. So I'm going to select M0 just for the heck of it and leave the device signal on and we'll see the impact on the numbers. But we know that it's not necessarily the densities that we're interested. We're interested in the colorimetric response. So click OK over here and then uh, click OK over here. And now we're ready to measure. But uh, before measuring, I have to get to the sheet, cut it, and that's when I'm going to pause the video. Thank you. So here's the output that I was looking for. This is simply a four color scale. It goes from, it goes from the paper to the uh, maximum of each channel. So the next step is to take this, cut it, and feed it into my measuring instrument. Okay, so first I have to reach for my exacto, but my blade seems to be broken. I don't know if I have enough, so I'll try to cut it like that and see what happens. I probably don't have enough. No, I don't have enough. So I'm going to have to change the blade here. What a waste of time. Take this out like that, although I could cut it like this here. I think I can. There, almost. There it is. So I'll cut it, I'll leave it aside for later. And I have to just uncurl the paper a little bit, just so that it feeds without an issue into the instrument. Now I could uh, write uh, some documentation here. But I always write big letters. First things minimally July 5th 2019. So that way I have a trace. Okay now we're measuring. We're going to be measuring with this instrument. This I wanted to show you quickly the inside of the instrument, the measuring head is here, and all it does is when the paper is inserted, it goes from left to right, scanning. Actually, it's not scanning, it's measuring patch by patch. But it's going so fast that we have the impression that it's scanning. So the, um, uh, the LCD says here that it's waiting for a chart to be fed in. So this is the chart that I'm going to be feeding it. Okay, so I've got my, my instrument uh, debugged, so I'm now inserting the chart again. And I won't show you the inside of the printer, of the machine, because that's not what I want to do. So, see, it fed the chart in completely, and then it ejected it completely. And on the way out, there is a sort of a grayscale scanner that's inside here somewhere, and that's scanning the, the chart as it goes through and that's how it recognizes the patches so now it's going you know traversing the, the target from left to right one patch at a time and it has four rows to go so one for yellow one for cyan one for black and one for magenta so now that's done so i'm going to leave that over here a second and i'm going to turn back to my screen so the, soft, the software, the instrument has finished measuring the patches. So we know that the patches were measured 
successfully by this message over here and all I have to do is click the OK button. Once I do that, then the software should receive the measurements from the instrument which, show sh which should show up over here in a few moments. So I have to be patient. Sometimes the transfer is not instantaneous. So here are the measurements. 0.93 for the cyan, 0.72, 1.11 and 1.33. At this stage I have to decide what to do about the measurements. I ideally should save them, so click the save button, navigate to my document directory where I uh, already have uh, the structure in place and this would be the file that I would be saving these measurements under. So I'm going to hit the save button. It's going to say, do you want to replace it? Yes, of course, I want to replace them. And then it would want to go to the next step. But uh, I know that these densities are going to be too low. So I'm going to go back and choose a different paper type, which will uh, order the printer to spit out more ink on this paper. And so for now I'm going to hit cancel and we're going to go I'm going to go back up one more step one more step until I get to select reselect everything over again and this time the difference is I have to be careful because it keeps reverting back to this original ESP target I got caught a few times and uh, the driver is still the same, it's the paper selection that is different. Before I selected Enhanced Matte and now I'm going to go with Oris Pearl Proof. And the surface of this paper is much more, much less porous. It's not like a sponge, like the matte surface, so it's not going to absorb as much ink. So more ink will stay on the surface and I will get more saturated cyan and a more saturated magenta. These are the things that you find through experience and through measurements. The rest should be the same. I don't have to change anything else. Leave the date, leave the header, leave it everything the way it is. Just print uh, the target over. So print over here. I have to tell the software that I will be using an external spectrophotometer for measuring and before I hit the next button and that's how it goes. So that is going right now, printing all the lines. You'll hear my printer going in one second or two. I can almost hear it now. So it's gonna roll the paper and then I'm going to be able to measure the target as soon as it's fin I have finished cutting it. And then I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna land back into this interface once again and you'll see after measuring that these numbers are going to change and uh, so now I'm going to pause the video and we'll resume it as soon as I have the measurements in. Alright so one of the secrets for profiling is to measure color so I'm going to use my this Minolta FD7 and I'm going to be measuring the cyan, magenta, yellow and black patches because I want to see for the density that the software says I'm getting on the screen I want to have an idea of some kind of colorimetric value I want to know you know exactly what I'm getting I'm getting uh, something good something bad so let's get a, a feel for the reading so here the cyan I'm going to be putting down here cyan and it's a 64 it's rather light minus 30 and minus 50 minus 50 is good and I wish that number 64 would be lower but I guess I'm gonna to have to live with it and this number here 
it is never going to be more negative than this because of the shade of the paper so let's go for the magenta now and the magenta looks oh boy awful so magenta is 67 and the A is 62 and the B is minus 20 it's horrible it's a this is way too light the magenta I'm gonna try the yellow now yellow says wow yellow is plenty yellow equals 90 and the A is minus 6 and the B is 1 0 2 that's so that's plenty those numbers suggest that there's plenty of yellow in this ink so and the black should be fine it looks fine to me visually but let's see what the numbers the black is 24 uh, 1.8 and minus n minus 0 0.6 wow it's according to these measurements the black looks incredibly neutral now I could continue I could continue uh, with this setup and uh, I'm going to uh, pause the video here because I'm going to be redoing this with a different uh, target paper and or is to see if I'm getting different results for the cyan magenta because there is no way uh, with this printer and this driver to obtain a more saturated cyan magenta without changing the paper type that's how it works so I'm gonna pause this video now and experiment with this a little further before going on okay so I uh, was suspecting that uh, I was not getting all the color I wanted out of the uh, printer and this paper combination because of the type of paper being selected over here and initially I remember I selected Epson and hence matte but that's not what I want uh, now that I know that uh, it restricts the range of colors too much so I went back and selected Oris Pearl Proof which is lying to the rip in a way because it's telling the rip that uh, in turn is going to tell the printer or maybe is going to select a different kind of table internally that causes it to uh, spit out more ink on the paper because the pearl proof is a, a coated kind of paper so the, it's able to withstand a thicker for lack of better words thicker layer of inks and so uh, compared to the enhanced matte or maybe it's the contrary I'm not sure but I think it is uh, causing the uh, application to lay down more ink on the paper and that's why the cyan and magenta solids were improved as you will see in the following video so we're back in color tuner and I sh should take a look at uh, where the sound is coming from if I approach my head from the microphone, is it better now? The phone, the microphone seems to be plugged in. I don't know why the sound is so, so low. Uh, uh, not much I can seem to do at this point. So, so the next step is to measure the chart. So I'm gonna turn my Minolta FD9 on, hit the next button, and uh, just before moving on i'm going to just wait until the instrument says it's clear it's finishing uh, initializing and uh, doesn't okay it's finished initializing so let me hit this button and test it again it should respond and i'm not going to bother checking the properties it should still be in m1 so i'm going to hit the measure print color patches button over here Okay, so let's see what the instrument says. Turn around. The chart is feeding through now. Uh, it's going to take a second to analyze it. 
and uh, hopefully the sound uh, is better this time I don't know what I could do to improve the quality of the sound this is the same uh, setup that I used last week for the other videos I made and I don't know what to say so hopefully it's better now maybe there's some gain control I'm really not familiar with the uh, video uh, I uh, wish I could know everything but you know there's only so much I can uh, know and learn at my own pace so the chart was measured and that's what it says here test chart measure successfully click OK and uh, you see now the numbers are very different before they were 0.93 now they're one point so if I wish I could increase this number 92 but really I'm wasting my time it's not gonna happen so I'm gonna hit apply I'm gonna save these numbers so it wants to save them in this, this location I'm not gonna do it I always save them in a place where I want to save my stuff under SC S5M you see S5M so now I'm gonna create a new place so enhance mat and under enhance mat is where I'm going to be saving my files so let me first you see I'll need to make an RFP subfolder so this is this serves me to get the name of the file so under enhance map I'm going to put hit one RFP and under RFP I'm going to put here and enhance map FD9 M1 and we're into 705 that's just density only so I'm going to hit OK move on to the next target now it wants to save what it calls a linearization file so the linearization file I'm going to use this linearization file and I'm going to go back up over here into my enhance mat and under my RFP and I'm going to change this to enhance mat and I'm going to uh, change the date 7 oh five save so now this is done I don't want to fin optimize the linearization process I want to finish the linearization process so I'm going to hit next now I don't want to limit the total ink coverage uh, there's no need actually I would want to have more uh, but it's only giving me less so I'm going to shut the instrument down while I'm doing this to uh, better keep the sound and I'm going to hit the next button and uh, now it says select a test chart for profiling your printer now this is very important so I'm gonna go next now what chart do I want it's gotta be an IT8 74 A3 chart A3 G3 chart is the big one I uh, I want the smaller one A4 so let me see here if I can open it with Acrobat Reader to double check that this is indeed the right chart see page one of four page one of four so this is going to be consuming four pages of paper and how big is this going to be file properties 10 inches by 8 inches uh, I'm not sure should I bother fit one full page is that I guess I could use this size target but uh, okay I guess I'm gonna go along with the software suggestion waste a little bit of paper and we'll see what happens so I'm gonna close out of here close out of Acrobat and I'm gonna use this A4 because the A3 size is really big let's see what the A3 size is I think it it doesn't say but it uses more than one A3 size it's uh, and and what does this look like uh, oh, yeah a3 otherwise I have I could use don't have to use an IT874 I could use this uh, a TC 3.5 to create the right uh, uh, a sufficient characterization target and let me just open it up to show you what the target looks like 
and I'm going to reduce it here so that it fits within my window and this is the the, the, the target in question I'm going to reduce I think I can reduce the size not really it uh, stubbornly doesn't want to reduce the size how about the other way can I get it from the corner no it doesn't want to reduce the size of the target so I'm gonna reduce it down so you see it's it's rotated now that's not the other not the right direction I want for this morning so I'm not gonna print it rotated how about this one here I have to be careful otherwise I'll be wasting paper so this looks good to me that's the right orientation for the paper that I'm using this one I won't be using it uh, okay so this is going to be the one I want to use so click open and now it says now it's preparing the file it's processing it it's uh, you know uh, mapping the CMYK channels to the to the nozzles uh, letting the Epson driver do its magic and the next step I want to use to do once the chart is printed is I want to measure the profiling test chart and hit the next button so you see at this point it's very important that it knows what exactly I'm going to be measuring otherwise I'm going to be wasting my time now I'm not going to hit the start measurement button yet, just yet because it's a uh, it's only uh, you know starting to print the file right now as you can hear on my printer so I'm going to pause the video now good uh, so I'm back at the computer I think the audio looks good but I'm not 100% sure I'm just gonna lower it a little bit so this is the results of measuring the colors there are about 400 colors here in all it's an old chart but for characterization uh, for doing a, a reference printer profile I think it's fair enough so I'm gonna all the measurements are in I cannot really browse the measurement here or just uh, select uh, a patch and click on it and see its color that's not what it's meant to be so I'm going to save otherwise uh, I'll be in trouble so go to libraries go to documents and locate my SC5M enhance mat now I'm gonna go to Canon mat under my RSP because I want to follow the same structure so number three here measurements Canon mat 3C 3.5 FD9 M1 with the date is the structure I want so I'm gonna go back to one more level to enhance mat under the RFP directory so I want I'm not sure what the other files are here so I usually use like a, a number here consecutive number so that I can follow the logic afterward but I'll leave it at measure but it's not Canon it's enhance mat TC 3.5 see it's very important I, that I try to uh, put as much information in these files as possible because you know one week two weeks three weeks after the fact you know a month after the fact you know what is it that I was trying to accomplish and uh, I can look in the file uh, with the text editor and find out you know what instrument uh, M1 or Visus M0 but why don't I have it in the file name in the first place I think it's a good practice so save this now once once it's saved and I see the save button is grayed out I click uh, close to close this window now the next thing it wants me to know to tell is what kind of gamut limitation or reduction I want so I'm gonna leave it on minor because I already I don't have too much gamut the magenta is sort of a limit so I'm gonna leave it at minor that's a feature of this uh, color tuner web rip it's not necessarily the same or cannot necessarily be found in other rip so I'm going to leave it uh, uh, and then uh, enhance math M1 and I could put the date or the name of my mother anything over here really this is just a comment 
for documentation it's not necessary to write anything here but it's good thing it's a good thing we do it so I'm in the RFP and you see I'm gonna go one up one more up to the Canon folder to to steal the name so that I don't have this so I have the same name between both and I can trace their logic you see so it's not gonna be Canon Matt it's going to be enhance map I don't I'm not gonna put the Epson name just enhance map and I'm gonna put the fact that it's 05 07 July the 5th and it's a reference printer profile uh, Oris will automatically add the dot RFP extensions file name so save and that's it congratulations you see that wasn't too difficult so now we're going to move to the next step the next step is going to be to create a a printer calibration if i'm not uh, printer calibration yeah so i'm going to hit the printer calibration menu over here printer calibration and it's all wizard based so again i'm just going to follow you know calibrate printer now this window comes up and the first thing it wants to know is what is my reference printer profile the one I just created so I'm gonna go browse and uh, hopefully the window will open and by default it lands into uh, wherever the the uh, uh, Oris rip is installed so these are all reference printer profile that were created by I guess uh, our friends at uh, Oris but I'm gonna hit this button I don't want because my my reference print, print profile is not sitting into this path so I'm gonna hit this button and go to the document and go to SC5M and hence mat and then RFP you see so that's where it's going to find my reference printer profile there it is so I'm gonna select it and once I select it and I can click the OK button now the application knows exactly where to find my reference printer profile now it will want to know what chart I want to use and the chart I want to use is the same exact chart that I just used so I'm going to go browse and at the bottom of this list I find the uh, TC 3.5 CMYK FD9 is the exact, exact, exact same chart. But if I want to be 100% sure, I can open it with Acrobat Reader and say that yes, it is the exact same chart. So close this window uh, and click open. Now, this so the chart appears here. Everything is going very well. Uh, the linearization it's showing up here. See where it's finding the linearization from. And uh, it's funny because uh, the linearization seems for my Gracol, so it's not right. So I'm going to change this and then uh, I'm going to go to something called calibration. And uh, I want to uh, load the linearization from today. So I'm going to hit uh, browse. And I don't want to get it from the Gracol for, uh, directory. I want to get it from the Enhanced Math directory. You see, Enhanced Math, the date, dot .lin. So I'm going to click open here. And that should take care of giving me the correct linearization. Hopefully, that's how it's going to work. As far as color correction, I don't want any color correction applied and uh, there's no question of spot color correction at this stage either marks info i don't want to have uh, any uh, i guess i could for this uh, step i could have the header on and it's going to print the rest of the additional information and uh, let's go back to driver make sure that all this is still valid let's go to paper make sure that it's always it's still on pearl proof because that's the one we got the best success from and uh, fine fine 720 funny because it doesn't seem to be the same uh, super fine 
seven let's leave it on 720 by 1440 that's what it was on before i guess that was because we were on the enhance does that make any sense on enhance that's all we had access to but uh, we need to be sure that we are uh, on oris pearl proof because it's going to give us the same kind of quantity of inks on the paper now the paper source is going to be 17 inch auto cut banner so that's still very good print layout we don't care calibration we make sure we have the the one we just created today color correction not important this is not important this is not important and this is not important so at this point we're ready to print now does that make any sense let's be let's be 100 percent sure because once we press the ok button over here i see it says settings for q matt yeah that was the setting for the other q that's why all these information came came about so i'm going to hit ok so printer calibration this should all be fine so users document roger enhance math m1 so that looks good i don't have to change the ink limit i don't have to do anything else here above and above hit the continue button so continue and now it wants to output a printer calibration file so same idea see all these files i prefer to keep them in the same place and give them meaningful name so i'm going to go libraries documents and back to my sc5m you see there's something called canon mat let's go visit this one and i have a subdirectory different one for pcf for printer calibration file so i'm going to double click here and i'm going to select the file name so i'm going to go back up one more over to the enhanced mat here i'm going to make a new directory it's going to go it's going to be called 2pcf and now I'm going to double click to save the file inside it. So I see it's at step number five, but I, I guess I could leave it at step number five because it's step number five in the process. Enhance mat 2009-07-05. And the extension is PCF. So I'm going to get uh, hit save. And now it offers me the opportunity to change the linearization at this stage i don't want to do that i am confident that i the one i selected will stick so i'm going to hit next so at this stage you you see what the software does it uh, process the target and it's gonna uh, turn it over to the rip in a, uh, to the printer and i'm gonna hit i want to measure the test chart because i'm not bringing measurement from outside the application not yet i want oris color tuner to load this uh, to load the data to extract the data from the printed chart S you hear my printer going in the background now so i'm going to hit the next button and it's going to take a few seconds to print the chart out and then after that i'm going to leave the chart to dry for a few minutes because there's a lot of ink and I can tell that it's it's uh, soaked into the paper okay this is the next step I'm gonna go get the chart from the printer okay got it in my hand so I'm now gonna turn over to the instrument and feed it in see what happens uh, it says please connect so I'm going to hit the start measurement button otherwise nothing is going to happen uh, it says please connect again oh, something C says measurement measuring failed now I'm going to hit the start measurement again see what happens please insert chart this time it seems like it's going to go let's give it a try As you can hear, this is going now. Uh, it's uh, too bad I can't uh, capture what's going on to my left as I'm uh, 
I'm capturing from the screen. I I I'd have to. Uh, but you've seen before how it goes. There's a few seconds. I think it's like a, like 20 seconds or so, or 15 seconds. It depends on the complexity of the chart to recognize the patches. I wish there was a some kind of progress bar over here in the middle that would appear. You know that would inform the user on the progress of chart detection but there is this message that appears here it says run patch detection uh, sadly uh, once this is this is well you know in terms of designing software I, s I realize that they have a number of instruments to support and uh, you know they could give us a royal golden support but it would uh, for this instrument but it would take away from resources that could be devoted to supporting other instruments or developing other part of their software so i'm not going to blame them it works i you know it's sufficient and if i don't like what the software does as you'll see later i can always have the liberty to measure outside and bringing the measurement in the forms of uh, text files from uh, some other application and we'll see that in a, in a minute so it's almost done let's uh, follow the motion it should be pretty see now the sheet is eject, eject, ejected so let me uh, hit the save button now in terms of PCF you see these are the measures it landed in the Canon directory so I'm going to select the measurement name the file name and I'm going to go back to enhance math PCF and now it's it says measure I'm not going to change this to enhance instead of Canon math the rest is still okay except the date so this is 0705 and save and at the same time I'm going to shut the the instrument down and close the window because the instrument keeps making noise for the next five minutes until it automatically goes in sleep mode so i'm gonna uh, hit the next button see what it does it should go to the next step once i save the measurement we'll see what happens let's give it a second more okay now that seems to be done so if that's the case then uh, there it is so that's that's the result of calibration that's the chart and measured and this is the Delta E 2000 uh, 2000 difference so between the reference printer profile and the printer calibration file profile uh, so there's a delta e overall an average of 0.61 with a max of 1.68 and so it wants to know am i satisfied with the result or i want to improve the result by further measurements and at this point i'm going to say finish because i'm satisfied with the result there's, that's plenty good for me so all it wants to know at this stage is what is the difference between now now that I've done this and the previous stage the printer the reference printer profile because it has reduced a little bit the extremes of the gamut the, the cyan the magenta and yellow and that's going to affect a little bit the measurements but that's going to give me leeway in the future to come back to recalibrate the printer on this paper without going to recreate a reference printer profile that's that's the Oris approach, similar to an MX3 in the NGMG environment. So I'm going to hit the finish button and I'm done. Now the next stage, the next step is to create uh, a characterization. I could use this from the TC2.3.5, but I don't want to do that. I want to go to a full length IT874 or IT875, doesn't matter. So I'm going to see uh, how far I can push my luck over here and so I'm going to go to either this button the color match or go to color color matching and something called match color which is the first step in this process so let's see what 
what that does the, to us. So this is the giant uh, dialog box that opens up over here. So now it wants to know where is the printer calibration file. Now this is the one that we just created. So it should know, it should have known where to find it. But in case we want to select it, we hit the browse button. And you see this is the file that was sitting in this directory. SCM enhanced map and the printer calibration file. So that's the one. And you see the fact that I will have the date, you know, on it and it's in the file name, then there is no question that it is the file that we just created a few minutes ago. So I'm going to select it, click open. Now I'm sure this is the file I want. Now the target ICC profile could be many things. I'm going to leave it at default Graco because for the moment it doesn't make uh, big of a difference. Uh, I just have to be sure of what I'm doing over here. The test chart it wants is a not this test chart. I want to browse to the test chart I want to use. Now where would this, this test chart be? Okay, I think I finally found the missing link, the piece of information I was looking for. And uh, it, it was over here in my documents folder, but I just could not see it. So it's sitting into basic I see color. I don't dare open these targets because they will launch into the software. And I just want to show you what we're going to be using, what I'm going to be using over here. If I hit select this with the right mouse button and open up with Acrobat. And what you see here is the exact target we're going to be printing. This is an IT874 target and it's split into two pages because uh, I guess I could have used it differently, but uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll use this, top, this target for this time. And uh, I guess it wasn't all that necessary, but uh, we'll use two pages. So I'm going to close this here and select it and open it up. And then uh, now it wants to know where the reference file is for this. The reference file is going to be a different story because I don't think I have the reference file and that's going to create a problem. If I actually could, could give him any reference file. Now that's going to start making our life complicated. So I'm, going, I'm not going to use this target after all. I'm going to go back to cancel here and I'm going to select the regular a3 format IT874 and that should be somewhere in this directory IT874 CMYK random ISIS A4 now I have to have a version of this target that is rotated 90 degree otherwise it's just going to be too big it's going to consume too much paper. You see this target is rotated 90 degree and it's the IT874 random. It has these diamonds for measuring with the ISIS but the FD9 is ignoring these diamonds. The important thing is this target will work and it probably has the right dimension so it's going to fit into my 17 inch paper. That's the criteria. So I'm going to hit open and I guess I could measure it here. We'll see. And now it wants to know what the reference file is. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the same FD9 directory. IT874. That's not the one I want. I want this one here. IT874 A3. So open. So at this stage, I should be in a good position to continue measuring and stay within uh, 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 stay within uh, uh, Oris to finish the job. So I'm going to here at the bottom I could select uh, RGB profile could be sRGB CMYK it knows to use the CMYK profile that's over here to populate this field and I'm going to hit continue. 
Did that make sense? I think it does. So continue. So load reference file. It still wants my reference file from somewhere for some reason. I'm going to give him the same reference file and see what happens. Now it was happy this time. So I'm going to go to libraries, documents, and I'm going to navigate again to my SC5M under enhanced math. You see, that's where I want to store the uh, the the color matching file is no longer going to be an RFP. I wonder if I didn't get the color matching file over here. So I'm going to select Gracol. And you see, this is my color matching file for Gracol. So I'm going to select that file, come back to Enhance Math, create a new directory for CMF color matching file. And double click inside here and leave it as Gracol 06 uh, Gracol 06 because that's what I'm I'm supposedly going to be matching on this paper and uh, so I'm going to change the date and the date is going to read the date is going to read uh, 2019 07 05 so hit the save button now does that make sense save button and once I save it the wizard should appear back and allow me to go to the next stage of the process which would be to print uh, this this chart but it's not coming back to me because the application is busy as you can see I select it and it says not responding so I have to be patient because hopefully the application is busy processing my request and uh, it's going to come up with a window but i still feel something is fishy here not going on right oh there it is so it says color matching wizard so i want to improve the results by further measurements so now hmm I don't think I'm going in the right direction. I uh, don't want to match Gracol. Uh, paper white settings would be what? Calculate paper white. That's not what I want. Gamut viewer is going to give me an ID of the gamut. This is at the bottom in black here. The target printer, target gamut. You see all these blacks, all these dark tones that are inside Gracol 2006. I'm never going to get them inside on this paper because this paper absorbs too much or does not give enough detail in this area for the match to occur. So that's not the way I want to do this. I'm going to close out of here and I'm going to close out of here. I'm going to cancel this because for, the, for what I want to do, it's not what I want to do. So do you want to cancel? Yes. So at this stage, I want to be able to uh, create the queue. So I'm going to go add queue. I, I hope I don't uh, get bogged down in my logic, but I don't want to use the rip uh, iterative feature to create the color matching file. That's why I'm going this way. So we'll see what the rib does. It should allow me to create the queue, select my calibration file. And once I have my calibration file, then I should be free to print whatever chart I want. And I'm, I'm going to probably end up measuring it outside of uh, Color Tuner Web. And uh, you'll, you'll see what happens. So this is the setup for the create queue so I'm gonna go next and this is continuous tone that's good for me and then what should be the next step let's see what the rib does let's be patient the printer is SCP 5000 and see it says it lists all the existing queue so I want to make a new one and it's going to be called enhance matte 
and it's going to create automatically a watch folder that should be visible on my network by that name so that I can drag and drop files into it and it's going to pick them up and, and print them. Uh, so I'm going to hit the next button and it says I want to use an embedded spectrophoton, it's not my case. So I want to use an external spectrophotometer for measuring, that's me. So I hit the next button, this is my um, device, and this is the IP address of the device, it's still under M1. I'm going to hit the next button, and the Delta E formula is DE2000, that's good. I want to use a reference printer profile, yes. Uh, so hit next. So where would be my reference printer profile? Over here, it's under my documents, SC5M, Enhanced Math, RFP. You see now it's very easy to locate. Click OK. And this is the reference printer profile I want to use for this queue. So I'm going to hit OK once I select it. And now it wants to know what the size of the paper is going to be. It doesn't ask me for whether it's ORIS, uh, uh, Perl Proof, or Enhanced Map. And I always, always wants to know whether it's Endless, Banner, and uh, so that's, that's, that's plenty for me, 16 and a half by 78 inch. I'll never get to that stage. Original size and orientation, you see that's all things that could happen automatically. So I'm gonna hit uh, Next. Now the header could be a problem. I'm going to ignore the header for this time and later on I'll add it back. So I'm going to hit next. Postscript, uh, that's good for me. Now I want to use an existing calibration file. Uh, so hit the next. Now he wants to know where is my printer calibration file. So go back up, documents, over here to SC5M, enhance mat, and it's in my PCF, is it in my PCF? I think so. There it is, in the PCF directory, it knows where to find it. It's looking for a file with an extension called .cal. So I select it, open it up, and now the method by which I want color match my printer, for now, I don't want to make any color matching whatsoever. I just want the calibration file to be applied on output. So I'm going to hit next, and nothing for spot color and next again and that's it congratulations i'm done so i've set up this queue by default with the uh, well not by default but there it is the queue and i'm going to go back to check the settings of the queue now so these are the settings that have been recorded paper is still oris pro proof that's good resolution has not changed it's still bi-directional roll paper 17 inch and list paper print layout i don't care calibration you see it's using my cal my calibration here my calibration file this is critical because if it doesn't use this then i've done all this for nothing color correction is none so i don't have to worry about anything so i think at this stage marks in four is empty this is for in case problem my way to work and so on uh, for workflow delta e formula and scatter proofing that's not my case i don't want to combine things uh, so i have to i can now just select okay and i'm done now once this is the way it works is that once i selected a queue like that then i can import or i can uh, tell it to print a certain file in the queue so at this stage i'm going to hit the print button and now it offers me a an interface to navigate to a file so i'm going to hit browse and over here what i want to select is in my documents folder uh, and there should be in my it8 random 74 isis blah 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 that i was looking for that i was about to print before it says hdr you know it's funny because that's not what it should be reading it should be reading hdm for heidelberg Druckmaschinen, german 
So select this file. I know this is the right file. And if I want to just be sure, I can just I can preview it with uh, whatever it is because it's not a uh, it's not a PDF. So it offers me to use a, a Windows own preview. Uh, uh, application to preview the file so I know this is the right file I'm gonna now I'm ready to hit the open button it's gonna confirm so the file sits here now it's going to this printer and it's going to this queue you see and I'm only going to use one copy so I don't need it so uh, I don't need to specify more that's what I meant to say the layout is 100% very important no auto rotate no auto scale See the tiny type of things that a rip can do? A lot of things. Uh, is it wants to center it on the paper? I don't care. Separations, uh, I don't uh, do any of these. Uh, process color calibration, I don't know actually what these would do. So uh, I don't want to print just separations, but I think that's what it would do. Uh, do I want to self proof? No. Do I want email a notification to somebody? No. So at this stage, all I'm ready to do is to hit the OK button and we'll see what happens. So the file should appear here now and the, the progress here should increase from 0% to 5% to 10% to 15%. And if I hit this, I can see a preview, a thumbnail of the image that's going to be printed. And normally you see it's 51%. You can hear the printer in the background starting to activate. Ah, it's good. It's a good. Uh, it's a good system, you know. It's a matter of working with this application. the The Oris rip is a, is a very good rip. I don't have anything to say against it. It's uh, it's not cheap, but uh, it works very well. Uh, so. I'm going to let the printer output the file and then I'm going to come back in a second to measure it. But I'm going to be measuring it outside of Oris and we'll see what happens. We now come to the stage where I'm going to be measuring the IT874 target. So in order to do that, that's uh, the target that just came out of my printer on the enhanced matte paper and in order to do that we won't be using I won't be using color tuner uh, because I'm going to be generating the profile outside of color tuner uh, and uh, with uh, uh, x right i1 profiler so uh, the next thing I have to do is to measure the target which I have in my hand and um, for that purpose I'm going to be using Konica Minolta supplied own FD52W which is a driving interface for the FD52 so here it is uh, this is their about screen you see Konica Minolta FD52 S and it's at version 1.6 so uh, first things first here is to import all these charts have been created either inside here but uh, actually they all have been imported from outside P2P uh, CGATS or text file uh, so they, they it's possible to create targets over here for instance uh, if I'm not mistaken under tools no uh, I guess if I go new chart over here at the bottom then you see I can define the size I can add patches uh, here's one patch I can add would be 100% cyan for instance and then can I add more patch another patch the second patch oh the I'm adding patch area over here that's not what I want to do if I want to add patches over here, what should I do? What should I be doing? I entered 100% cyan and it has shown over here. I guess I have to define the, the number of patches that I have in each patch area. So page, patch, page, patch area two. I'm going to delete that because we won't need this. So this is patch area one. Under patch area one, we have the 
offset from the left so let's say we have one inch and we have an offset from the top one inch as well so this is the location of the first patch and how many rows and how many columns determines the number of patches so let's say we have three rows and we have three columns so that's nine patches in all so let's close this one patch count uh, we need to define the patch size let's say I want a larger patch size like half an inch I type 0.5 over here I type 0.5 over here so that gives me half of an inch and is there any space between the patches that I would want let's say I want one inch that's stupid but let's put a value in just to see how the editor works so that's the first one see that makes sense now so it's a matter of filling the the area so let's say I want 100 magenta over here and on the third patch I want 100% yellow and uh, on the next patch I want 100 black and how about if I go for went for 50 black over here and 50 black this editor works very well but it's a it's a pain to have to enter all these values manually one has to have the time always a question of time and let's leave this at, at zero so we have the paper patch so let's save this and uh, it comes up as chart 0026 if I double click it then I can save it uh, three by three and I would put the date but I'm not gonna do that so when measuring any chart you see all these charts uh, some uh, were imported through a file uh, uh, open chart file I think and under open chart file you see it has some options for XML comma separated value SC CXF and CGATS which is text files so that's the that's the route I took took when I imported my IT874 uh, target for the ISIS so uh, to help the software because the software once it's connected to the instrument this is the instrument connection I'm going to deselect it so it's now deselected and I'm going to select it again it's says that it's connected to the instrument and uh, so the software can detect free form uh, but the idea is to select one chart and then let the software figure out or adapt the the um, specifics of the target by and however it wants that's that's the that's the brain of the programming all I want is the software to detect the correct position of all the patches so I've selected the target now I am holding the target in my hand I'm turning to the printer and I'm going to be inserted the target and we'll see what happens so the software has uh, completely swallowed and eject the target and, uh, and now behind the scene the software is working to recognize the patches if I go to measure print measure point I don't have access right now I do you see so now the software is slowly oh, the instrument is scanning row by row by row by row that's I think there's 45 rows here 33 columns in all 617 colors and these are the measured points meaning that these are the colors of the patches as the software recognized them see it has everywhere there's a red dot it's because there was a patch recognized and uh, as far as I can see visually the job the software has done a good job so I have no need to doubt that the data the measurement I will get out of the software will be valid will be indeed the one that corresponds to my measure target so it's pretty fast though uh, certainly in my mind beats the convenience of other measuring instrument I uh, 
had the chance to work before with uh, other kinds of uh, strip reading instrument and I remember the first one that came out uh, was the IC color and uh, IC color from Great Tag Macbeth at the time and I remember buying an IC color and I still own it to this day and it still works and I still uh, trust its calibration I had it calibrated just on uh, the date that they were discontinuing service to it which was in January 2015 or was it 2016 uh, it's been a few years ago but the good thing is that it's still working and uh, when I compare its readings to other instruments like uh, this FD7 that I have uh, or my i1 Pro and my i1 Pro 2 which are which is a, a more recent instrument uh, or even to my x 528 which was calibrated by certified by x uh, uh, how many years ago three years ago again uh, uh, the the measurement it's still uh, you know comparable comparable the same so uh, this has been going for a few uh, minutes now and uh, I would love to let it roll uh, maybe I should play some uh, elevator music while the rest of the chart is being measured but I don't feel like stopping recording and resuming the recording after because I'm not familiar enough with uh, the Camtasia software that I'm using to capture the video from my screen uh, it's going to come uh, eventually I'm going to bite the bullet and write these guys technical support or uh, uh, dig into the documentation looking for where if you know what how to do it please leave me a note uh, uh, in the comments uh, I uh, I certainly uh, uh, I'm willing to improve my technique uh, but you know that uh, my attention is still uh, going first towards color management and then the rest of the world but usually with color management I have plenty on my plate and uh, so we're coming down to the last three rows it seems I'd love to show you the what happens next because this is the first step the first stage in characterizing any device uh, is the idea is to sample what the device can do in terms of the range of colors that it can generate so I have the target in my hand and I'm going to now rename this file the the uh, rename the measurements so it's going to be SC5M because it's always this sure color 5000 and I would say PCF alone so I'm going to put alone in English and I'm going to put enhance matte and uh, here I'm going to be putting here no CMS no color management and I wonder if I can put the date here let me try 2019-07-06 bracket and it accepted it thank you very much so at this stage I don't need to browse the measurement but I guess I could you see what all what that happens on this side if I go towards the center of the chart uh, let me close the shut the instrument down because it still needs to cool down and it uh, makes all kinds of noise while it does so this is the center of the chart I always like to uh, uh, zero in on the cent on this area of the IT874 because it speaks to me so what we're, uh, we're going to be using is not the M0 measurement and not the M2 measurement. We'll stick, I want to stick with the M1 measurement because I know this paper has fluorescence. Okay, uh, some connection timeout error. I want LEB, I want XYZ in my exported file. The fact that it's observer 2 degree and element D50. Do I want density? Uh, I don't need density density is not going to be useful to me here so measurement condition the data we have we're going to have the ID 
we're going to add the color space. Uh, so now if I select, as I see, as I select the each one, look at the cyan. It has a okay kind of uh, curve. You see, uh, or spectral power distribution. It absorbs over here in this area of the spectrum where it sh actually it reflects. And it should reflect more on this side over here of the curve and a little more on the side of the curve. You see, what's interesting is that if we split this in three, we have from uh, 400 to about 500. This would be roughly the blue. And from 500 to 600 would be roughly the green. And from 600 to 700 and so on would be the blue. So we can see that the, the ink reflects a little bit in the green. That at uh, reflection co contribution is helping making the make the cyan look greenish, which it should look like, but it's not. So uh, it's uh, it looks bluish because of the paper, naturally. Now let's see the magenta. The magenta uh, looks funny. It should reflect a little more here. Uh, it should absorb a little more over here. At any rate, I'm going to speed this up because I want to get to export. Look how beautiful the yellow is. I mean, spectrally, it's about, uh, you know, cutting exactly where it needs. So close to a, an ideally or theoretically perfect yellow. Uh, over here, uh, this is the red. Again, not bad. Green, you see, it doesn't go very high. And blue, doesn't. it's rather dark. What can we do? What can we say? And this is the paper. Uh, this is the paper. This is the substrate. If I pull this up. Will I be able to see a better scale? You see, this is a better scale. So now uh, you can tell the, by the color. The LED readout that it's a 5 minus 6.79. So under M1. So it's pretty ready, relatively bluer. Relatively, uh, you know, uh, full of optical brighteners. And uh, this uh, this curve at about 430, 425 over here, this bump, this hump, I don't know how to say it in English, is uh, typical of the fact that uh, there is fluorescence in this paper. And uh, and there's that's the, that's the way the paper is made. And so we expect this extra bluish appearance, but because of uh, chromatic adaptation, uh, we don't see it as much. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't appear blue to our eyes. So uh, let's me now export this data. So save. Save where? Good question. And I want to save it in my uh, in my in my Konica Minota Canon Mat. So I want to create here an enhance mat directory and under enhance mat see I'm going to leave all the file name the same sc5m pcf alone no cms no cms means no color management enhance mat and now I need to add something to the fact that it was measured by my FD9. Why not? Save. Okay, so once I'm done here, then I'm going to minimize this because I don't need it. And I'm going to be using a software called Patch Tool that uh, you may be familiar with. Patch Tool. So with Patch Tool, I'm going to open up the target. Actually, see now I'm, I'm using the term target. But what I'm doing is I'm opening up the measurement file in patch tool. So it's coming up now. There's 1617 patches. And this is the result of opening the file in patch tool. So if I drag or resize the window, you see, this is the target as it comes up. It looks okay, except that uh, if you have noticed that the patches are not exactly where they are. 
they, they have to be. So I'm going to use this function in patch tool called remap. And I'm going to use change layout to IT874 random. So now that's more like it. So at this point, I'm ready to export. So I'm going to hit the export button. And these are all the, the pieces of information that I can attach or leave uh, into that exported file. Do I want the spectrum? I guess I'm not going to put the spectrum. Or maybe I should. Uh, because I think that the patch tool doesn't uh, uh, integrate or doesn't send the sp save the spectrum uh, because it's uh, uh, below. We'll, we'll see. So let's hit spectrum and export. So now to denote the fact this is an exported file, I use the lowercase x and capital PT. Uh, letters to say that it's from patch tools so hit save and uh, I should be done in patch tool so my next step in my print profiling process is to use um, a piece of software called I want profiler now to use I want profiler I need a dongle now my question is where is my i1 profiler dongle? I'll stop the video here and we'll resume it next. Okay, so the next step is to fire i1 profiler. I'm uh, going to be using i1 profiler, but I could be using other uh, profiling software like uh, Argil or uh, uh, old one, uh, Profile Maker, Monaco. Uh, uh, there are some by Data Color. Uh, Fuji used to make one. Uh, I think Eidelberg has a good one. Uh, so at any rate, I'm into I want Profiler now. So I'm in the. Uh, I want to get to the Advanced mode. This is the basic mode. See how the left pane of the window changes. So what I'm interested in here is printer profiling. So I have to select down CMYK printer as my workflow. Uh, so CMYK printer. And once I have that selected, then I need to go to profiling. And under profiling, I guess I could select any one of these charts that are, you know, IT874 and so on. But using the advance button I can go to the next window and the next window after that because this creates the charts the printed charts actually the TIFF the file charts that are going to be printed to characterize the printer so here is the tab I want to get into and I'm interested in the load button so why because I'm going to be bringing in the data that I measured from uh, my printer through my uh, uh, FD9. So let me go to the documents and then I should have something called Konica Minolta and I should have something called Enhance Mat. Now it doesn't see anything here by default because it's looking for star.mxf file, which is not the file that I have. So my kind of file is a cgats file a text file txt so we can see now the two files being listed if i select this file for some reason my application does not quite map well to the expected colors uh, whereas if i select this one exported from patch tool then it works okay so that's the route i'm going to follow click open now uh, X I1 profiler wants to know, you know, what's the status of these these measurements, because the software wants to know. Maybe just for documentary purpose. I don't know the consequence or the effect of this window other than being documentary. So I'm gonna select D50. Oops, it says invalid CGATS measurement file. So let me try my luck again and uh, see what happens because I need to get past this 
uh, stage to be able to do anything with the file to be able to get to a so I'm going to leave it at M0 see invalid measurement file now what's let's try loading the other one in just for curiosity if it's going to take it out of the original Minota measurement okay this is good let me leave it at M0 we'll see what happens and leave this at OK and now you see all the colors are being mapped correctly this time uh, which they were not before so this is a good uh, good news so I'm gonna uh, save save workflow and I'm going to give this a meaningful name so it's going to be SC5M SC5M PCFs uh, alone but I would like to have something to the effect that it's enhanced mat so PCF alone I want profiler measure FD9 and we want the date to be today 0706 save so it appears now on this side as a save workflow so I could select it and presumably get everything back to me the way that I would want to uh, without having to hunt for importing the measurements over now we come to this stage here and I want to know I don't care for intelligent black I'm going to try to deactivate this and I want the black to start at 30 the maximum black to go to 100 okay I guess it could go to 95 but the total ink coverage here 400 percent that's a lot uh, we could bring it down force it down to 370 at any rate the software is not going to allow uh, going to 400 all the way on its own it's going to reduce it it's going to find what the optimal point is so we'll leave it at 400 for now doesn't matter black curve is medium we could use what heavy medium medium again so let's leave a medium medium curve or a, a light black curve okay let's go for a light black curve and black width at 50 meaning the range of chromatic color is going to eat into let's leave it at 50 uh, perceptual table we don't care for more contrast or less saturation neutralized grays that's is going to be uh, different uh, let's not dig into that and let's leave the tables at the medium size and uh, chromatic adaptation but that's doesn't come into play but still smoothness ah smoothness I want this to be smooth all the way so if the software is able to smooth the data I want the software to smooth the data and uh, do I save the workflow again save the workflow again so this is today the same date I want to overwrite this because I want to save this parameter for future reference so now I'm gonna hit next and I'm ready to create the profile so this is the profile so it's going to be called SCM PCF alone no CMS and hence mat FD9 2019 M1 and I should have here something to the effect that it's made by I1 profiler so SCM I1 profiler profiler and based on PCF alone and so on and so forth so uh, it's in going to include the CXF data and it's going to send a copy in the color folder and it's going to create a copy for me to fetch on the desktop if I want to so that's that's it I'm ready to hit the save profile button and now the software should do its magic so it's creating the ICC profile for my printer my paper combination and uh, we'll see what it does uh, we'll know in a few seconds uh, seconds so it's relatively fast and uh, the speed is not really a, a new, an issue over here 
we would want to want it to go you know take the time that it needs to in order to do the best job so I'm clicking OK this is the gamut uh, visualized in 3d of this uh, printer my printer uh, on using this the art inks the inks that it's using and uh, on the paper on the enhanced mat this doesn't look like a compressed or squashed cube but it is it's the squash cube so I'm done and I'm going I don't know if I need to save the workflow again probably not so at this stage I should be done here with I want profiler and move on to the next stage in my exercise so I'm gonna pause the video here before moving on thank you for your attention and patience so far Next part in the, my little experiment uh, is the evaluation testing of the profile. So the profile was created with the I1 profiler. There's a copy here sitting on my desktop and there should be a copy also sitting in my color directory, which is deep down into my Windows uh, system somewhere. So if I browse the content of this directory, this is where the ICC profiles are located uh, on a Windows system. And uh, you can see here, if I hit uh, date modified, then uh, this profile should be uh, the last one I created. And I created it yesterday morning on the 6th of July and that's the one IE1 profiler SC5M and so on and so forth so that I have two copies because that's how I that's how I selected it in I1 profiler this profile here is going to be visible by Photoshop this profile on my desk here is not visible by Photoshop so let's go to Photoshop and let's see what it does so this is the Photoshop window let me arrange it so that it's visible inside the maximum over here this is my tools and this is my info palette so I need to select the profile uh, over here somewhere there are many ways I could do this uh, you will uh, I will uh, show you exactly what I'm trying to do there's a noise of a helicopter flying in the background sorry for now so under edit color settings uh, I'm going to select here the CMYK profile I just created so if I hit down now you won't be able to see the window all the way down because that's unless I, I bring this up more how about now still no uh, still too much so I'm going to go down to SCM it should be here SCM I1 profiler PCF no alone and you see the fact that I have the date here and now what's interesting is that the system is showing the the complete path of the software at the bottom of the window if I move the arrow the mouse it no longer points to this information and I cannot show it to you with my mouse here at the bottom uh, but there it is and I know that's the right profile because it says 2019-07-06 now for this experiment I want to use relative colorimetric and I want to use black point compensation so I would leave this checked and click OK now I'm going to minimize Photoshop and I'm going to go to Illustrator and Illustrator you can see a little bit of what's going on and what I want to do is I want to focus in on this here uh, so these I'm going to leave aside and all I want is to be able to work with I1 profiler over here so I'm going to change the documentation and it's no longer Canon matte it's going to be enhanced matte 
photo paper, gray balance curves calculated by I1 profiler, sorry for the 90 degree. And the date is going to be here 07, 07. We're July the 7th already. Okay, so this is me. I'm going to uh, resize the Illustrator window so you can better see what's going on. Apologize for not doing it before, but it's never too late. Uh, so there it is, almost there. I'm sorry, it takes the time. Should have done that before, but it's there. So now you're going to be able to follow better what's going on. So what I want to do uh, with the profile at this point is to evaluate it. And in order to evaluate it, I want to convert a grayscale, a LAB grayscale going from L0 to L equal 100. At L equal 100, we know this is the paper. This is the unprinted paper. So we should have zero cyan, zero magenta, zero yellow, and zero black. Now, what do we get here at this point is a mystery until we get it from the uh, from either Photoshop. We could get it from uh, Illustrator, but I don't want to do it in Illustrator because I want you to see it coming from Photoshop. Uh, so let's see. Uh, let's uh, go back to uh, Photoshop and let's see what Photoshop says. So this is Photoshop. I'm going to. Uh, hit or just click on this foreground color and uh, the color that's already coming up here is RGB 0 everything 0 but LEB 0 0 0 as well now you see this build here 89 63 71 98 that's the CMYK value that I1 profiler has calculated to map out or to convert 0, 0, 0 to CMYK, to device values. Those are independent and these are dependent. So let's see if this makes sense. 89, 63, 71, 98. 89, I think it's 63. Let's see if it was, yeah, 63, 71, 98. 63, 71, 98. You see the software went almost to 100% but stopped short of 100%. Now it was for the Canon paper uh, a 341% total ink limit. So let's see what it is for this paper this time. So I'm gonna, going to uh, add up 89. Uh, maybe I could, I could resize this window over here. I think I can resize this window so you better can better see what's going on. And so I'm going to clear out everything over here. So 89 plus 63 plus 71 plus 98. Oh, sorry. I want to uh, one more 98. 321. Let me just redo it again. 89 plus 63 plus 71 oh I think it's it's wrong it's not 71 I think it's 81 is it so let me go back to Photoshop yeah it's 71 81 89 63 71 98 81 63 71 98 so as far as the total here uh, let's redo it again I'm sorry 81 plus 63 plus 71 plus 98 that's 321 percent total ink limit so somehow on the canon paper i was able to take down take a, a little bit more ink but you know there's nothing wrong with 321 percent ink limit and now i need to transfer this over so this is a cmyk document i'm going to go to the cmyk uh, color space and I'm going to update these values 89 63 71 and 98 so that's 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 that that's that should be L0 in relative colorimetric with black point compensation now what is it for L10 so go back to L10 go back to Photoshop 
and type here 10. See the value has changed? 84, 63, 69, 85. 84, 63, 69, and 85. So now I don't, I don't really care to know what the total ink, because this is not the maximum. Uh, so now I need to update these device values. 84 cyan, 63 magenta, 69 yellow, and 85 black. Uh, save, very important. Save, I hate losing my work because I have not saved. That's being neglect neglecting. Uh, that's I've lost enough uh, stuff uh, working with computer that I know how to that I know to save often. So now we're going to 20. So type in 20 L. Still zero A. Still zero B because we want something that is neutral, quote unquote. So what I need to do now is transfer these four CMYK values: 78, 63, 66, 66. Seventy-eight, sixty-three, sixty-six, sixty-three, sixty-six, and how much black? Sixty-six black. Sixty-six black. So that's that. And then I need to transfer this over to this patch. Seventy-eight, sixty-three, sixty-six, and sixty-six again. So you see the appearance of the patch has changed uh, so next step here is 30 boy this is gonna take time I don't want to keep you all that time but I think you understand the process also I'll pause the video and come back when this is done next step in my experiment now that I have successfully transferred all the CMYK values from Photoshop to Illustrator it's because you'll see in a few minutes that I will use this chart, this series of patches, and I will print them with no color management on my printer. And then I will be able to measure them with my instrument and see how far I'm getting from the predicted results or what is going to be the appearance. How do these colors will appear to me? You see, this looks different. Then the other ones, this sort of looks yellowish, and for some reason this one does not look as yellowish as the previous one. So there is not an error, but there is this funky behavior that I don't know how I'm going to be able to resolve later on. So now the next step would be to print this on my printer. But before I do that, I want to get to another part which is to draw these in the form of curves. So these are the uh, values that I had over here. So these are 89 signs. This is the each of the CMYK. And I need to update this. So I'm going to uh, put this out like that. And each dot represents one cyan magenta color. So this is the 100 row, this is the 90 row. So if I have to put 89 cyan over here, then I need to bring this dot down about a little bit below 90, about here. Now the 98 black goes up about here. And the 71 yellow goes, this is 80, this is 70. So 71 yellow would be here somewhere. And magenta would be 63 magenta so that's the 60 mark so 63 would be about there now of course I could line all these up perfectly vertically uh, under each one but that's that's good so the next text next one is 85 black so 85 black is smack between 80 and 90 I should transfer the scale over to this side maybe it would help uh, let's see if I can do this quickly. Hold this. 
bring this over here that, like that and now we're sure that what scale is what so let me bring this even closer and that's gonna that's going to help and push this over like that it helps to know how to use illustrator whether you're doing color management or not i anyway so 84 cyan is going to be here 85 black so 84 and 85 black are going to be very close to each other so let me uh, so, uh, position the cyan over here 69 yellow is a little bit below the 70 scale and uh, 63 magenta is at the same place as it was over here i observe that the magenta does not change for three consecutive l star values that's how it is what can i say so 60 uh, let me push this over here and i want 78 cyan 78 cyan is over here uh, more or less uh, 66 black is going to be somewhere here about where just a little bit more halfway up i could do this more precisely but it's plenty like that and i want also 66 yellow so because it's the same value i'm just going to push it aside like that so that i can see it and 63 magenta again like i said for some reason it's the, it topped out at the same height so leave that the way it is now i next for one i want 42 black so 42 black is going to be about here and uh, 6 60 62 cyan uh, 72 cyan is here about 60 magenta is smack here on the scale and 62 yellow is about here next one is 21 black so 21 black is below about here and uh, 65 cyan is here more or less centered and 58 magenta is below and 58 55 magenta is somewhere in between the two rows about there and 58 yellow is here a little bit before so i could line these up better vertically under each other but uh, horizontally under each other but i'm gonna leave it like that see if i had to i would select all four of them and then i would go to this uh, button and align them uh, what do they call it align them horizontally yes horizontal align center next step is next step is 57 cyans 57 cyan is here about maybe a little lower 10 black 10 black is going to go down to this scale this height and 54 uh, magenta is about here has to be below 57 maybe this is more like 57 and 54 yellow is the same 54 yellow is here uh, sorry it's the, the the magenta goes below the yellow uh, and the yellow goes about here 54 about there and 48 magenta goes here below 40 see that makes sense let's move on to the next one uh, sorry for taking this time and so long but i want you to see the whole process in case you would want to do this yourself there's nothing wrong with doing it yourself four percent black goes here uh 49 cyan i think goes here is this 50 yes this is 50 so goes about here 49 48 yellow goes a little bit below like that and uh 48 yellow and 40 magenta goes here see that makes sense 40 magenta save uh, we need 40 percent cyan so let me bring this down 40 percent cyan we need 33 magenta that's about here and we need 41 percent yellow that's there and the black should be pretty close to the zero axis i'm going to put it here the next step up is 30 uh, cyan so 30 cyan goes here 24 magenta and 30 yellow 30 yellows goes at the same height as the cyan 
and uh, sorry 30 yellow I keep uh, putting the wrong one in and that's uh, that's better and 24 magenta goes just before the half mark for these two and black at zero and the next I'm going to put black at zero as well and we need 17 cyan so that's about here and we need uh, 16 yellow which is about here a little bit below and then we need 14 magenta so these are all UCR meaning that with under color removal with no black uh, this should produce neutral grays on this paper given the measurements that's how I1 profiler has calculated them so the last step here I'm going to start with the magenta curve I'm going to draw these curves so here's one here's two here's three four five six seven eight and then nine and ten that's the magenta curve uh, I could smooth it out more but it's going to be plenty now let's see what the cyan curve looks like so this is the cyan and let me grab the pen tool to draw the cyan what does the cyan look like about like this okay this is a little bit too low I could bring it up this is the cyan again I don't need to pull so much on the these handles but it's okay I can always come back to refine them to my art content afterwards that's it deselect now I want the yellow so 0 0 100 and I'm gonna start the yellow over here yellow is there and over here funky dip here in the yellow but I have to trust the at I1 profiler has done the calculation right and the last but not the least is the black so let me click hit 0 over here and 100 over here so the black looks like this 0 0 1 percent 4 percent and then it goes up a little bit more uh, dramatically and more and more and to top out at 100 percent this is the black so I could uh, improve the appearance of these curves the smoothness of these curves by editing the handle like so I'm gonna leave it like that for the sake of time because I don't want to take all your time today and this at uh, the same last thing I want to do is put all these things at zero so zero should be zero no matter what and so here's the black at zero I didn't quite hopefully I messed up the curve yes I have messed up the curve so let me go back over here and make sure that I edit this by the endpoint and not by any other point or the segment on the curve otherwise it's not going to work so that's the appearance of the curves so you see what we can say now about the curves is that the yellow is always systematically above magenta but it's not always the same relationship it is the same relationship over here but for some reason as black is introduced it changes and it's interesting to see the shape of these curves because this is done with this package I want profiler but what happens with uh, other packaging uh, other profilers and what happens also when it's done through GCR so this is UCR because we need to specify that it's using UCR not GCR and now the next step would be to run the page my eight and a half eleven page this page here on my printer and then to measure this and then I'll know you know how good this is colorimetrically and I will know how good this is 
visually because this should appear neutral to me relative to the paper shade. So I'm going to pause the video at this point and uh, proceed to make this uh, next step. Thank you for watching and your attention so far.